Hey, can you show us your painting process from zero, like step by step, and explain how you do it? I can't get a grasp of painting smooth, even though I try. Step zero: make a new canvas. Usually, I do B4, like the paper size, and make it 300 dots per inch, and change the canvas size resolution later on. And here is the white canvas. Here is the base color, based on the color I like. Here are very, very abstract brush strokes, the same hue I used as the base color, but more saturated and darker just to make sure I know where I want to paint. Here, I filled in, or colored in, messily, what my form wants to look like, more detailed, in some sense. And you can kind of tell what direction I'm going in. Moving on, we have the face. You know what he's gonna look like. Here I resized the entire the character shape. You can transform by Control T. It's the same on all digital art programs, I believe. And also on the upper left-hand corner, I like painted out where the light source is gonna be. Usually, I don't draw like the little sun arrow, but for step-by-step -step explanation reasons, I did so and. I just kind of drew out where the highlight is going to land on him, like on the, this angular plane on his face, and a bits of pieces of highlights on his hair, and on his neck, and on his shirt, kind of. Moving on, I add a, a new color for the highlights because I think it's easier to differentiate the highlight from the base color form. And usually, I like to make the highlights the opposite color of the base form. So in here, the base form is like a maroonish, desaturated red. It's like, so pretentious. It's fucking red. The opposite color of that is like a cyan. So I use cyan for the highlights. Now here I added a little bit of more colors as you can see on the side. And on the face and the skin, where I added the highlights, I added another color that's closer to normal skin color. I actually don't know the reason why I added that color, but I think it looks nice. And I actually touched up the shirt a little by adding the highlight color here, but like really lightly because I still want the highlight to stand out the most. And I added like a little bit of a darker color on the hair and the eyes just to like get a sense of direction on the parts I want to make darker. It got darker. And I added a new color. The shirt's going to be darker than every anything else on the body. And I forgot to say this, but forgive me in advance for sounding like a pretentious prepubescent boy who's a robot with depression. Also, I added another color that's most saturated, and I usually pop that color in between the highlight and the base color. And I added bits of those highlighted, saturated colors on his hair. Why do I do that? I think it's like a refraction color or it's something, there's an actual term for it, which I don't remember. I just think it looks pretty. And there we go. Next step. I just realized I'm not counting these steps, so I'm sorry, but you must put in a little bit of effort if you want these steps to be numbered and in a continuous stage. My sincerest apologies. Now here, because the last step, was just me 
throwing and punching in some darker color on his shirt. The next step, I like blended it in. And usually when I say blended, I don't rely on brush settings, like like how much it blends, uh, the pr- oh God, what was it called? The- Here we go. The amount of paint, density of paint, and color stretch. I think Paint Tool Sai has like different words, vocabulary for it, but I don't use those kind of brushes. I just use this brush. Uh, it's like a downloadable brush I'll share it later. And I just use that at a lower density and color pick my way for making everything look softer and more blended. And that's how I quote unquote blend. I did add the darker colors to the eyes and nose and eyebrows, trying to make the face a little more stand outy, noticeable. I don't know why I didn't say noticeable the first time. Here we have me trying to fix the face shape because I don't know what kind of mouth was that. And the hair as well, making it a little bit more hair-like. And I clean the edges of the outside of the form. And honestly, by doing that, I feel like it already makes the painting look more finished. And I added a little bit of more details on the other side of the collar and the neck. And I think that's about it. I added a bit of the more orangey color on the shirt as well because I think it looks pretty. And here, I kind of jumped a lot on this step, but it's mostly me adding details on the hair and bringing in the cyan highlight from the light source which I have created whatever steps ago, just to make everything more hair-like. I just realized I kind of toned the highlight of his nose a little more and blended in the face so it doesn't look as messy and unfinished. Oh, also the jacket. I should zoom out with a here. Also, I guess I wanted the entire jacket to have a more cool tone compared to the face hair. So I think I used this color right here and lightly painted with that on this side of the shirt. And I think I'm pretty much done with like this side of the highlight, but what I think is pretty too is making a secondary light source that's the opposite of the cyan, but a little bit more saturated and lighter than the base color red we used in the very beginning. And that's what I did here. Uh, these are just touch-ups. Like touch-ups on the nose and the hair. And here I changed the background color a little. I thought by changing it, I would make the form stand out more and the background stand out less. Here I changed the overall colors a little by bringing out color balance. For me, where is it? It's under edit and color balance. And for me, I can't like live without this effect. And basically, as you see, you can change the mid-tone to like more reddish overall feel, more green or magenta overall feel, more blue or yellow. And you can change that with the highlights and colors as well. I am blinding myself and this is hurting my color theorist major intellectual eyes. Actually that looks kind of cool, but I'm not going to do that. Anyways, and then I changed the contrast and added more brush strokes. I'm sorry I didn't do that on another layer, but I think I am done. This is what the actual 100% zoom in is. And close up, 
it's super messy so when i usually change the file or export it into jpeg like god forbid that i don't export all my files as png i'm sorry my computer isn't like best but i feel like jpeg works more for paintings anyways unless like you're trying to do pixels or whatever uh, anyways, I can press it to like 50% the size, and it usually looks less messy afterwards, so yeah, this is the painting. So that's the end of this video. I'm pretty sure you have all been mesmerized by my voice filled with undiluted, pure enthusiasm. But in all seriousness, thank you guys for watching this video. See you again.